price of goods and services is taking a toll on people living in poverty and endangering the livelihoods of smallholder farmers, especially women. As part of efforts to cushion the impact on them, the Centre for Indigenous Knowledge and Organisational Development held a press conference for uh, smallholder women farmers in the Bono, Bono East and Dahafo regions. Uh, the meeting held under the theme, Building Resilient Livelihoods, for women and smallholder farmers through agroecology was uh, to, amongst other things, give the women group the opportunity to share their experiences. There's more in this report. Women are key actors in Ghana's agricultural sector where they constitute more than 50% of the labor force and produce about 70% of the country's food stock. However, women continue to face multiple disadvantages, especially in the rural areas. To help empower this marginalized group and encourage them to adapt to agroecological farming methods, which is one of the surest ways of combating climate change and addressing food security, the Center for Indigenous Knowledge and Organizational Structure, with support from Action Aid and the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa, held a conference for smallholder women farmers in the Bono, Bono East and Ahafo regions. Wilberforce Latte is a deputy executive director for the southern part of the country at SICOD. About five years ago, we started together with Action Aid and Peace and Farmers Association of Ghana. We started working on the promoting agroecology. So last year, we brought together the women farmers or the women counterparts of the members of the agroecology movement in the transition zone. But this year, again, in collaboration with Action Aid, we are organizing this meeting and uh, to look more at the practical things, you know, when it comes to soil fertility management, when it comes to pest management, what are the critical things that has to be done. This women group used the opportunity to share their experiences on agroecology as well as challenges facing them and proposed strategies aimed at addressing them. They have quite a lot of experience. In fact, they, as part of the program, we, are, we gave them the opportunity to share their experiences, and they did. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. Some of them are using tobacco, name, and garlic to ward off pests, you know, from their crops. And um, there are a lot of knowledge. Where we have gotten them to now is how can they put the knowledge into practice? One of the areas discussed at the conference has to do with the establishment of a market for organic food crops. Olaomi Benedict is an organic farmer, a trainer and an advocate for the participatory guaranteed systems. She encouraged the farmer group to come together by having an identity and also establish satellite markets in their respective areas. We all know that organic is more expensive than conventional. So how do we encourage them to continue to do organic if they are selling at the normal market? So we have come to tell them that they can have segregated market all over, but they need identification. They need uh, to be identified with something. And the only tool for certification all over the world is called PGS. The group were then taken to a demonstration farm at country number two where they received the practical knowledge on some agroecological farming methods. They share with us what they learned in the process. In fact, what we come and learn, we came to learn so many things. A lot of deliberations, experience sharing, like whatever is transparent on each other field. Um, in terms of our uh, uh, preparation, to shun away pest from our vegetables. At this conference, I've learned so many methods, like a way of uh, fertilizing the products that uh, you can use uh, rice. You soak the rice overnight. Then you pour the water out of it, add sulfur. You spray or produce with it. Programs officer at Action Aid Ghana, Yaose brought and admonished government to address the poor road networks linking farming communities to major market centers as it remains one of the key challenges facing smallholder farmers. One key challenge that they mentioned was um, um, uh, access to their roads, good roads, from their communities to the market centers. 
and I think it also um, um, affects their ability to assess the market. So if in areas where there's an opportunity for government to construct the roads, I think it will be quite important for them so they can get access to the market. Reporting for Joy News, Anas Sabit. The renovate.